Every year, South Korea seems to produce a blood-spattered gore fest or toe-curling thriller. For some reason, the country knows horror and how to bring it to the masses in a consistent and epic manner. Anytime a new film from the country is released, I pay attention. South Korea's newest GOP fest is reported to have used 2.5 tons of fake blood during production. Now that's got my interest. So I've got on my slicker suit and I brought an umbrella, so let's talk about this first row Gallagher concert style horror masterpiece that is Project Wolf Hunting. <laughs> Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Project Wolf Hunting, a.k.a. Noog Day Sanyang, is new on digital download and Blu-ray and DVD from WellGo USA. It's directed and written by Hong Sun Kim. As a gesture of goodwill, the Japanese government extradites a group of dangerous Korean criminals and sends them on a cargo ship from Japan to South Korea so they can be prosecuted in their homeland. But the criminals have other plans. They escape from their shackles and ransack the ship and crew. But unbeknownst to them, the criminals are not the only dangerous cargo aboard the ship. On ice in the bottom level is an experimental super soldier called Alpha. Once awakened, Alpha tears through the ship, not caring whether the soon-to-be-squashed person in front of him is criminal, crew, or innocent. Blood is splattered everywhere. And I mean everywhere. While the premise is as ridiculous as it comes, Project Wolf Hunting is one adrenaline-filled and blood-spattered titan of a movie. Everything is over the top with this one. The villains are extra bad, the blood is lawn-sprinklered about in an abundance, It's violent from beginning to end, and this is no short flick. It's just about two hours long, and really, the film rarely stops for more than a few seconds to take a breath. If you're looking for nonstop intensity and kinetic mania, Project Wolf Hunting delivers. For about the first hour of Project Wolf Hunting, it feels like Con Air on a cruise ship. The prisoners escape and go on a gruesome rampage through the ship, taking out guards and civilians alike. This is set up, just like Con Air, with an assortment of villains, and of course, one or two who are bad guys, but not as bad as the rest, a la Nicolas Cage's mulleted character in Con Air. While the action is fierce and goppy, I couldn't help but feel how familiar this hour was, as it takes literal pages straight from Con Air, which is actually a great concept, but not the best movie. Project Wolf Hunting is the gory undercousin of Con Air in this first hour that goes the despicable places its American counterpart only hints at. Once the mayhem has occurred and the criminals have taken over the ship, almost like clockwork, at the one hour mark, a universal soldier-esque experiment escapes from the lower levels of the ship and murders everyone in his path, no matter if it's criminal or hero. And this is a manner that is beyond gnarly. He stomps around the ship barefoot, punching holes through heads and chests, kicking people across the room, and basically tearing chunks out of anything he runs into. Again, we've seen this concept before, but not at this intensity. Think of what Universal Soldier or the police station siege by Arnold might have been, directed by Train to Busan's Sang Yo Yong, or the director of last year's South Korean masterpiece, The Sadness, and then multiply that carnage by 11, and maybe you're getting the level of horror Project Wolf Hunting touches upon. Alpha's wrath is unparalleled. The simple prosthetic of having his eyes stapled together gives Alpha a monstrous and original look. Not sure why his eyes are stapled together, but still, it's a cool look. And though he sees via heat signatures, another lift from an American classic Predator, his wrath is truly epic. The way the blood sprays in all directions is inspired, reminiscent more of the goriest of anime than anything else. The performance ranges from cartoonish to decent. The lead bad guy, Park Jong-do, played by Seo In-guk, stands out as the evilest of the criminals being transferred, but he really is the mustache-twirling, aren't-I-so-evil type of villain with no real redeemable qualities. In one sense, he's truly terrifying, but in another, he's playing a one-dimensional villain that simply relishes in the chaos he unleashes. 
Gui Hua Choi, who plays the unstoppable Alpha, gives a horrifying physical performance with no lines, just simple brutality. These are the two roles that stood out most to me. The problem with Project Wolf Hunting is that everyone else feels almost like simple bowling pins ready to topple at the hands of the inmates, the monster, or the police. This film establishes a huge cast at the beginning, then kills them off pretty nonchalantly without giving them some kind of moment before falling when many American films would have done so. This isn't a complaint. It adds to the unpredictability and the danger of it all. It's just that many times I had to stop and figure out, wait, is that guy who just bit it a criminal or a cop or a crew member? I wasn't sure. They're all kind of run together, and I'm sure it's because I was distracted half the time trying to read the subtitles. That said, everyone's death is monumentally grotesque, each meeting their maker in sticky, disturbing, splattery, and ugly ways. The gore is ceiling to floor, with no one escaping being sprayed upon as the death is doled out. While there have been gory films from overseas in the past, particularly South Korea, this one takes the blood-soaked cake in making the red stuff flow. One of the things worth pointing out is how this film sounds. Because everything takes place inside a metal cargo ship, everything clangs and bangs. Alpha's footsteps bang like a shotgun blast as he runs bare feet across the metal flooring. Guns echo through the halls. Gore splatters like a garden hose with your thumb across the end and then ends in disturbingly pleasant droplets like a spring rain fading away. On top of it, the action is frenetic, and the camera is often cluttered with all kinds of people, pipes, and machinery. This gives off an especially confusing and cluttered look to the film, but it only adds to the anxiety of this bucket of feeding piranhas of a movie. It all culminates in an epically gory superhero smackdown with little dialogue and horrifying effects aplenty, as more superhuman experiments reveal themselves. Sure, if you're into the current elevated style of horror and sip your cup of warm blood with a raised pinky, you're going to be put off by Project Wolf Hunting. It might be just seen as pointless violence for violence sake, but I don't care. Yes, the premise is over the top and sometimes kind of dumb, but it's the type of big, bloody action that I love to see. I highly recommend this to those with a taste of blood, gore, and violence and are not afraid to get their hands dirty watching it. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality